welcome back. Today I'm giving you a wrap up of my Aurelium uh, reading, which you, I, uh, Aurelium is a magical world hosted by G at the Book Rose, link down below, <laughs> um, who uh, used to post a Harry Potter readathon and when all of that stuff blew up made her own world which is much lovelier, more wholesome, more inclusive, more better in every way. I love Harry Potter, but better in every way. Because um, who doesn't love wholesome and inclusive? Right, so uh, the idea is you read some books which is equivalent to taking exams and then later on you read some more books which helps you determine what job you can do in the wider world of Aurelium. And I am very indecisive. I am 44 and I have not yet decided what I want to do with my life. So it's hardly surprising that I wouldn't be able to decide in this magical... <laughs> I mean, I'm doing alright with my life. Don't get me wrong. But, you know. Right, so yes. So I had three choices. I thought I could either be a scribe or a math magician or a wrist architect, which is like a portal maker. You'll see, you notice I'm not very good at making portals, but that's because it's real life. Not that great at writing either, I look at my little notes on a post-it. <laughs> I'm not great at math either. Hmm. Maybe I should have picked something else. So <laughs> that's what I did pick for a total of 14 books, and I'm going to go through and tell you what I did. So it's a math magician. I needed an O in alchemy, that's a one book level in alchemy. A two book level in inscription and a one book level in psionics and divination. So this was the easiest of my choices. So for the first one I needed to have a book from someone else's worst list and I happened to find the silent patient which um, has been I picked up in in a book box booth um, because I'd heard I vaguely remembered hearing good reviews of it. But I found it on a worst list and it was in my TBR anyway, so I read it and <laughs> I don't quite know what to say about this book. It is, it has a very unpleasant protagonist. Uh, the main protagonist ego and, I mean, he's skin crawlingly awful. So if you don't like that, then... Uh, this is not going to be the book for you. And the eponymous silent patient is so sweet and lovely and I just want to make everything right for her and everything is going right for her and then it isn't. So everything was going right for her before the book started. It went badly wrong before the book started. She was found with a gun and her dead husband, who she adored, and that didn't speak again. And she's an artist, a very good artist. And she's surrounded by these people who just want to use her for their own ends. It's very misogynistic. I mean, the book isn't misogynistic, but the people who fill the book are, if you see what I mean. Like, it's obviously a story about how these people are bad and wrong, but they do a lot of being bad and wrong. So it's quite an uncomfortable book. Um, I didn't see the twist coming at all so from that point of view it might be I think it's a good book but it's an uncomfortable book so I don't know whether to recommend it or not but if that sounds like your thing <laughs> The Silence Patient by Alex Michaelides I'm glad I read this I haven't got anyone in particular that I'm going to suggest it to next I'm probably going to take it back to the box I got it from to be honest okay but moving on now these books were an every one of my um, <laughs> occupation lists. So I needed the two book level of inscription for this one. I needed the, the three book level of inscription for scribe, which makes sense, doesn't it? But I needed two book level for math magician. And the first one was a book you loved, as, a book, a beloved childhood book. Well, it was that way around because I was thinking, does that does that mean it has to be one I loved, or does it mean that it has to be the people around me? And I think I put one on that the people around me had loved, but I actually read one from a series that I loved as a child, Summer Term at the Shallow School. 
this is from quite late in the series it's quite I mean it's it plays hard on the series tropes so like there's this main character Joey who's always acquiring extra children either through giving birth or adopting and she gets quite a lot more children in this book uh two or three um <laughs> that's quite uh like what and there's a train crash which is also a thing and there's a fair and there's bad weather and it's all the things that that happen in the shallow school book except in almost every book someone is left still gray and to all appearance is dead and that does not happen in this book but apart from that i think someone even gets measles i can't remember it's almost a month ago since i read this book um measles or like chicken box or something that happens a lot hi hi i think this is it sorry you not seeing the video uh why not top. who wants to talk about why people are still gray and all the appearance is dead sorry do you want to talk about why people are still grey? They're not. No one in this book. I was just saying is is found still grey and to all appearances dead. Good. But that, that happens in most of these books. He's never read a shallow school book. Have you read any of these books? Um, any of the books on this whole table? Uh, no. I think I bought Mexican Gothic. You certainly have Mexican Gothic. Um, someone infused about its high mushroom content. It does have a lot of mushrooms. Okay, uh, uh, but what I else? haven't read it yet. You should read it, it's got lots of mushrooms. Thank you. You haven't read any of the St Mary series, have you? No. No. You'd like those, they've got time-travelling historians. And you haven't read Badger to the Bone. No, I have not. You've read Harry the Ninth. Would you like to talk about Harry the Ninth? Um, I could talk about Harry the Ninth, but since Everybody I know believes that it is a heartbreaking work of staggering genius. Um, and I believe that it takes unreliable, unreliable narration and... T it takes unreliable narration to the point that characters themselves do not know what character they are. And I feel the end note by the author thanking the local nursing service for the tasty banana flavoured antipsychotic medicine is I, I found the book dull so I mean that's more of a recommendation that I was going to give later on in the video <laughs> um, I mean it is more of a recommendation that I was going to give <laughs> I mean it's dull because it's incoherent so you can't tell whether exciting things are happening in my play there and well, this is maybe. probably too harsh. Thank you. Coffee pot. So I'm telling you about this, and then we jumped around a bit. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> that's okay. And uh, the last, the next one was um, graphic novel, which uh, my lovely son gave me the book set of Umbrella Academy graphic novels which I didn't even know was a thing and it's very beautiful and it's got a woman who might be a violin or a violin who might be a woman and I, I've never seen the programme so I don't know whether that's accurate or not. It was slightly darker than I was expecting. Slightly harsh. Sli no, slightly more Marvel than I was expecting. That's, that's what I found slightly weird about it. Um, but uh, I'm assuming if you've seen the program, you'll know whether you want to read it or not. But it's it's quite sweet and quite sad, and I'm really really glad I read it. And even if I'm not finding a lot to say about it, and uh, yeah. So the last book for mathematicians to make me a mathematician was a one book level of psionics and divination which I read A Trail Through Time by Jodie Taylor, which is what I was just mentioning there, the St Mary's books. And I read two of the St Mary's books um, for the purpose of this read-through, and they are uh, A Trail Through Time and then later on, um, No Time Like the Past, they are books four and five in the series. And it is a... <laughs> if you've read Watch Timeless, um, then it's kind of like the book version, the British book version of that, 
and if you haven't watched Timeless, then this appeals, and maybe you'll like Timeless. But it's about historians who go back in time to kind of make the timeline be the way it's meant to be. It's kind of a bit like Chrononauts, the book series, and uh, there's romance, and then there's people dying, and then there's people coming back in alternate timelines, and there's people from the future coming to the past, and people from the past coming to the future. It's all a little bit of a dance. But it is a dance and a weave rather than a, hey, what the hell is the time I'm doing right now? So, um, I find them quite quick reads, I find them quite pleasant, and uh, I really like a lot of the characters and the way they interact together. Uh, so that was A Trail Through Time by James Taylor. And that's me being a mathematician, yay, I could be a mathematician. <laughs> the next one I'm going to look at is because that's on the same side of my tiny piece of paper. Okay, and to be a scribe, I needed a one book level of elemental studies, which was Start a Book with a Drink, which was the No Time Like the Past, which is the fifth uh, St. Mary's Institute book. Then I needed a D in inscription, which was uh, three level, three book level, the summer term, the Umbrella Academy, and When Sorrows Come, which I did have a physical copy of, but I don't know where I left it. So When Sorrows Come by Shauna Maguire is an October Day book. October Day is a sort of fairy, she's a changeling hero, she's a swashbuckling adventurer, I mean she's not a pirate, probably, I don't remember her being a pirate so far, but why not? Who like varies how much she's human and how much she's fairy and she wanders around saving people and saving the world and saving I'm a little bit wary of because it's quite a long way through the, the series at this point I'm a little bit wary for spoilers but October has a, ma has a romance and she's had a wedding coming for a very long time and it's here and it's lovely it's so beautiful and uh, yeah, there's a lot of mistaken identity and everybody trying to blame October because she's a hero and she's not entirely fairy. And there's lots of fairies and it's all it's all brilliant. It's all brilliant. I definitely recommend it. Um, and uh, this is the 95th in the series or something, 13th I think. Um, I'll pop it in. This is the in the series and. Uh, <laughs> And so you probably want to start at the beginning, but they're all really lovely, and I definitely recommend it. I think there was a book in the middle which I didn't like so much, so if you've got one that you didn't like, then just skip over it and go to the next one, it'll be fine. Okay, so after Toby, from Owen Restoration, and I'm not quite, a one level book in Restoration. So, one book level. So, I wasn't quite sure I got this one right. But I figured these reader fonts, are pro the prompts are just prompts. They're open to interpretation in all different ways. And I really hope that's right because I wrote one of the prompts wrong, slightly wrong. And when I changed what it was, I didn't quite... Anyway, this one was a focus, one thing focus on the cover. And I thought this sword is definitely a focus. And I don't think that's really what they meant but it was the closest I had to filling the prompt and Jade Firegold her destiny his revenge and I loved it I was not expecting to like it I mean I would not have picked it up it's a fairy loop book and the thing about fairy loop books is that they're pretty much all ones so I read the synopsis and go oh, I guess I'll read that and then I read it and I love them <laughs> so that's why I get the box is to make me read these books which I really love so <laughs> this is about a girl with magic who discovers that she has this magical ability to um, basically eat people's life force and the boy who should be part of the and um, their growing friendship and the friendships of people that they know in common and, and it's really about interpersonal relationships but it's also about getting out there, kicking ass, working out who the bad guys are and defeating them. And it's really lovely. I really, really liked it. So, if that sounds like a tutorial thing, J5 Gold by June C.L. Sam. 
the next one was a tier level book in how do you say that? Two book level in law. Country flag. So I live in the UK. Our flag is red, white, blue, like the majority of the world flags. I went with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I picked up at the works. And because again, I'd heard good things about it, but I didn't really know much about it. And I loved it. This is someone who is convinced that the bad guy, the bogeyman of their town, did not actually commit the murder that he, everyone thinks he did. But because he died before he could come to trial, uh, there's no <laughs> evidence that he didn't do it, but there's also no evidence he's not been convicted of it. So she sets out to uh, redeem his name, and in doing so uncovers the web of deceit and lies and people not being who she thought they were and people being better than she thought they were or worse than she thought they were and uh, it's all very um it's written in the form of a a long-term project what do you call those long-term projects people do in year 11 now well she's doing one of those um and uh, it's all written in like it's got her notes, her transcripts of her writing, and then like just ordinary prose. So it's a bit of a mixture of. Um, <laughs> Can you hear the dog? I think someone's shut the back door and she wants to back in. But anyway, uh, if you like that kind of mixture, then um, this is for you. If you like. I, yeah, I would recommend this to a lot of people. In fact, I'm going to give suggest this to Tom. Uh, although I know he hasn't read it yet. Well, I mean, he's just stood here and told us he hasn't read it, has he? So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you like crime, if you like slightly unusual books, if you like books about someone, like cold case books, if you like new tricks, is it old tricks? Do you know the one, that thing on the telly? Then uh, you might like this. Um, the the law, the final book for <laughs> the scribe qualifications was Mexican Gothic, which we touched on a little bit there. This book about betrayal, I thought I had put, originally put this in my TBR for a book on someone else's TBR, and then uh, for various reasons, which I'll get to in a minute, and then I bumped it. But then I realised it has an obvious a amount of betrayal. It's someone. It starts with someone who thinks her husband's trying to kill her. So I thought that sounds like a book with a betrayal to me. It has a lot of mushrooms. It has a lot of family love, a lot of found family love, and a lot, a lot of mushrooms and some creepy bad guys. And uh, yeah, he's gothic and creepy and Mexican <laughs> and. Uh, you should probably read it. Probably you'd like it. I can't. Obviously there are going to be people who, people who don't like it. But <laughs> I, I would definitely recommend this to most of the people I know who read books. Most of the adults I know who read books. I'm not sure. I mean, my two-year-old loves books, but I don't think this one's for her. <laughs> okay, and then a Rift Architect. I'm going to make bottles. And I don't know why I'm doing this because I know I'm not going to fill it in with like fire or brimstone. I think you make a portal of brimstone. Anyway, so <laughs> for it, I had the two book level of inscription again. These two books doing a lot of work on my TBR. The D in spells and incantations, that's the third level of third book level spells and incantations. first one was a book from a colour wheel and my colour wheel picked purple and this was a book which was recommended in the Aurelian um, Discord. <coughs> this was a book recommended in the Aurelian Discord in April and as you can see it's slightly dog, the dog loves it. And it's a romance between a gumiho and a human and there's people trying to save other people and there's people trying to work out whether they're monsters and what monsters are 
and it's really sweet and I, I don't normally go to the romances but it's got a lot going on and it's, it's just sweet and lovely and if you like romances and you like foxes and you like, if you like K-dramas, this is a great one for you. Okay, and then the next one was Badger to the Bone by, hmm, I have even forgot her name. So I read the first one of these series because I heard it was a um, paranormal romance about, <coughs> I heard it was paranormal romance about honey badgers or possibly another fantasy about honey badgers and it had a half naked uh, a half naked man on the front and it was called like hot and badgered that's what it's called hot and badgered and i thought okay this is gonna be there's gonna be quite a lot of sex in this book there was no sex in the book at all and i was like okay so why is there a half naked man on the front well badger to the bone <laughs> well badger to the bone has a picture of a tiger on the front and does have sex in the middle so I'm deeply confused about whether half-naked men or tigers are meant to be more sexier. But it's quite a uh, quick, easy read, urban fantasy about honey badgers. And I was going to put it in my... I needed one for with a bone in the title or on the, pic, or on the cover. Because it's called Badger to the Bone. But then I got a notification that my... Uh, library book that someone else was waiting for it, I had it a library book, a notification that someone else was waiting for it. So I thought, haha, it's on someone else's DDR, I'll move it up to my someone else's DDR book. So that's what I did. And then for a book I make notes on, I got given my uh, child gave me Disney bound, dress Disney and make it fashion for my birthday. And so I made loads and loads of notes on that. I mean on paper because I can't write in books. And uh, yeah, so that was really cool. And I did find one that I wanted to make books on, and I'm really glad I've got book. And I don't know why I haven't got it to pick it up because I put it somewhere. Yeah. Okay, and the other things in the the last two books, and the reason I couldn't get to my bone book was because I hadn't finished my necromancy book. So I needed a two book level in conjunction, for which I needed to read a book of necromantic themes which I read Harry the Knights. Now, I didn't greatly enjoy Gideon the Knights, so why I thought I would enjoy Harry the Knights, I don't know. But people around me read it and loved it. We heard Tom's opinion of it earlier in the video. Uh, so I'm not going to say a lot now, but it's not really my thing, and I am not going to bother reading the next one when it comes out, because... So what if everyone else loves it, around me loves it? If I don't, I might as well read something else that they dis don't love, and I do. <laughs> the last book I read for this readathon was Soul Taken by Patricia Briggs. It just came out at the end of August. It has, now, in the Mercy Thompson series, she often has tattoos which change on the cover. It had a nice skull in her tattoo on the cover. So <laughs> brilliant! I can finish these! And so I uh, took it in the past and finished the book and it was brilliant and I loved it. In this book, Mercy comes up against an urban legend, a uh, harvester of souls with a sissy eyes or a sickle and they're very particular in the book about which it is and I've forgotten. So he... Um, a sickle, I'm pretty certain it's a sickle. Come and he harvests the soul with the sickle, and again, there's weird stuff going on with the vampires and the fae, and maybe some people are missing who shouldn't be missing, and maybe in this attempt to provoke all out war between supernaturals and humans. And it's a bit convoluted, and there's lots of mystical stuff going on. Um, and there's, sometimes there's quite a lot of religion in Mercy's book because Mercy herself is very religious, but not so much in this one. Um, but it was really lovely and I found it very, very exciting and I'm finding it quite difficult to come up with this, talk about it, but I'll spoil it. But if you like the sound of werewolves and coyotes, 
coexisting and taking on the world and making the world a better place, then the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs is a great place to start. And this is this is book thirteen of the series. So you've got a fifth for you. Okay, so how did you do in Aurelia? Um I'm sorry my video was a bit disjointed because I wanted to get Tom to talk while he was here because he knows a lot of authors, he reads a lot, he knows a lot about books in ways that I don't and he's often got something exciting to say about books and in this case he just wanted to tell me to talk coffee then approves of more coffee. Um, that <laughs> that's why my video is a bit disjointed, which you could probably tell if you got up this far. So I will be back later in the month probably with um, showing you goodies because obviously I'm going to get my fairy loot box and also book box club very sadly shut down but to be honest I say it's very sadly but I kind of got to the point where I was bored of their books so I stopped buying them so I'm part of the problem <coughs> but they're selling off all their stuff stock so I bought a load of mystery bags that I'm going to divide into stocking material because I know it's September but <laughs> they're not going to go off are they and if they are then I'll just eat them uh, so I'll be coming back to you with that to show you what I've got there and on my family and I'll be coming back to you with a big cop cop plus on reading I'm not quite sure whether I'll bother with another vlog or whether I won't but I'll see you soon anyway thanks for watching bye bye